This is my 83rd briefing of 2020 on COVID-19. And it will be my last of this terrible year full of so much suffering and pain, but also one full of hope and promise. Thank you for letting me into your homes and for the messages that you've sent through me, the help that you've delivered from the city and the ways in which you have touched the lives of so many people still alive today and the way you've embraced and held families that have lost everything this year. This has been the toughest year of our city's history, the most difficult that Los Angeles has ever faced. The end of the year, we often take stock of where we are, of the things hoped for and still that we hope for in the future. We look back on mistakes made. We look back on things lost. But this year, it's almost too painful to look backwards because while we hold on to the hope of healing, we still stand in the suffering of today. But I'm always blown away by Angelinos, surprised whether it was the neighbor that came by yesterday just to deliver sunflowers to me and my wife and daughter to say thank you. The couple, as I picked up burgers for our family last night, who said, keep on going, Mayor, we're with you. Or the folks that I see with their courage, like the AmeriCorps volunteers I joined with this morning at the American Red Cross headquarters, putting together PPE kits to hand out in some of our most vulnerable communities, building on the good work of my colleagues that I'm so grateful to serve with. Folks like Monica Rodriguez, who are passing this out in Northeast San Fernando Valley, and the mayors, the supervisors, and all the city and county officials who show up every single day alongside those folks who are in our hospitals working day in and day out. I wanna thank you all, and thank you for inspiring me to keep going. This year continues to be one in which we have held more than we ever thought we could lose. I witnessed our heroic firefighters receive some of the first vaccines on Monday. Today joined with USC and Sean Penn and the folks from CORE and others from Curative and other organizations and companies who are helping us deliver those vaccines quickly in the communities where our healthcare professionals live who have not yet been offered those vaccines. I'm reminded of their courage, even as they have colleagues who are hospitalized or home isolated because of COVID-19. Never has a year asked so much of us and never has a year taken so much from us. But I see that this start of hope and of help is the right note to start a new year, as long as we finish this year as strong as we can. One in every 1,000 Americans has now lost their life to COVID-19. One in 1,000 of our compatriots. And yesterday was the deadliest day of the pandemic here in California, with half of the state's deaths here in LA County. Today, there were 104 new deaths in the city of LA and a total of 274 in the county. This is the highest number by far since the start of the pandemic. We knew the numbers were coming when we saw the infections go up and then the hospitalizations and we knew death would follow. But our hospitals are now treating patients in their gift shops and in their chapels mortuaries and funeral homes are having to turn away bereaved families just wanting to bury their loved ones. And now this disease is killing more people without underlying conditions. Let me repeat that. This disease is killing more people without underlying conditions. Things like asthma and heart disease, which so often took people early on, 93% of those who died had underlying conditions. But this week, it dropped dramatically to 88% meaning that a high percentage of the new deaths are not people with underlying conditions, showing just how vulnerable we all are to COVID-19. And now our city has been enveloped in fear and pain and grief, and our public health officials tell us that still the worst numbers are yet to come. We always look at the current numbers and what's coming, and we look backwards. Our cases are not exponentially rising anymore, and that's good news. But as I said, hospitalizations trail and deaths trail those hospitalizations. So I still expect those numbers to continue to rise. And science has taught us how this virus operates. It spreads when we get together. I know for many people, we can't avoid being 
with the household where we live. Often too many people living too closely to each other, a place where the virus thrives. And I remind you that we have work to do to make sure that we keep our hospitals functioning and our vaccine able to prevent this pandemic from spreading. And maybe you're thinking coming up to the new years, you just can't take it anymore. And you're not gonna have a big raucous party, but a few people getting together is st still safe. It's simply not true. Nobody should be gathering at a big party and nobody should be gathering in a small party as well. These are the ways that this virus will spread to your loved ones, to those closest to you, your closest friends, your boyfriend or girlfriend, your parents, your children. Some who won't be taken from us will spread to others and those people will be taken from us. So it's all it takes to set off a dangerous and often deadly chain of events. We've seen a Thanksgiving bump, we're feeling the possibility of a Christmas one, please do not let us have a third surge that we simply cannot take here in Los Angeles as a result of our new year. As it takes up to two weeks for infections to make people sick and a while longer for sickness to find people in a hospital and longer still for that illness to turn tragically into deaths, it means that if too many Angelinos, too many of us got together, even in small groups across households for Christmas, we won't know it for a while, but we will feel it in our homes, in our ICU units, and in our morgues. And every single one of us has the power, as I've said throughout this year, to stop that surge. What an amazing thing for each one of us to be able to do that. So my message couldn't be clearer. Do not get together with others on New Year's Eve. Do not host or attend a party in person. Do not travel. Celebrate virtually. Stay at home. Welcome the new year with the people in your household and no one else. The County Department of Public Health updated its rules for travelers this week, requiring visitors and residents arriving from outside the Southern California region to quarantine for 10 days. That means people who think they can come and see their loved ones should not and will not see them. The Southern California region includes the counties of Imperial and Inyo, Los Angeles, Mono, Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura. And those arriving here at our airports will see new signage about the travel quarantine and a reminder to fill out the required travel form at travel.lacity.org. And the city will continue to enforce we will enforce the public health rules that prohibit large gatherings, which can be super spreader events. And as we have done over the, several, uh, over the past several months, yesterday the DWP disconnected utilities for a chronic party house in the Hollywood Hills. In recent days, our city attorney, Mike Fuhrer, has asked the website Eventbrite to take down invitations to parties on New Year's Eve. And the LAPD has also contacted some party promoters and property owners telling them to cancel their events. We're being proactive and we will be out there in force on New Year's Eve. LAPD will have a significant deployment patrolling the city to stop large gatherings and parties so we can stop the spread of this virus and so that we can save lives. And I wanna thank our officers for their work in a very tough year being out there to protect us. Today's numbers speak to the urgency of this moment. One in five Angelinos who are testing to see if they're COVID positive are now COVID positive. 20% test positivity across LA County. We had 10,392 infections today in LA County. That's a 1.3% increase since yesterday and 4,202 of those were in the city of Los Angeles. As I speak to you, 7,546 of our fellow residents are hospitalized as a result of this vicious virus. This is the highest number since the start of the pandemic and over three times more, three times more than just last month. 1,520 of those patients are severely sick and are in our intensive care unit beds, up 2.1% since yesterday and 174% since last month. You see, if you proceed with in-person events, if you mix and mingle with people outside your households, it's likely medical care will not be available when it's needed in a few weeks. And remember, not everybody comes to a hospital because of COVID-19. Something may happen to you or a loved one, God forbid, a car accident, a heart condition, 
something in which they need emergency service and there's hours long wait as we're already seeing in some of our hospitals. So getting through this dangerous period demands action from each one of us, from you. The majority of Angelinos are doing their part to follow public health guidance and doing their part to wage this battle against this devastating scourge. And we need everybody to keep wearing that mask, keep your distance, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and avoid any gatherings on New Year's Eve or otherwise. Another life-saving tool available to you is testing. And if you believe you've been exposed or have any symptoms, get a test. I know these two weeks, there's two days that we miss because of the holiday around Christmas and the holiday around New Year's. But remember, a negative test isn't something you take so you can go out. It is not a passport to party. It's not a get out of COVID free card. It should be prioritized for those who believe themselves to be sick. And if your test result does come back positive, isolate for 10 days from the time your symptoms first appeared and stay isolated for at least 24 hours after your last fever. And if you have to quarantine because of exposure, it's also recommended now 10 days as well. As of this week, we've now conducted 3.3 million tests at city sites since the start of this pandemic. Free and the current seven day positivity rate at city sites is 23.4%, a record high for these sites. And remember that anyone can see the level of infection in your neighborhood with the new maps that we've developed, the COVID-19 community map, a tool that shows 139 areas across Los Angeles in our city at coronavirus.lacity.org slash map. We are conducting up to 46,000 daily tests this week. All appointments are currently booked and we're constantly increasing capacity. And our five walk-up sites and pop-up sites will take folks without an appointment and those are still available. You can find all of those sites and information at coronavirus.lacity.org slash testing. And I wanna remind everybody that all of our testing locations except for Kedron are closed tomorrow. All of them shut down the next day for New Year's Day. As many of our extraordinary staff and firefighters, 750 core volunteers get a chance to recharge, but we'll be back. And as I said earlier today in, in Lincoln Park, I wanna thank those lab technicians who aren't taking days off and processing tests even through the holiday. And we're also closing the Dodger Stadium site on Saturday to restructure the site to reduce traffic in the community. And I wanna thank the Dodgers for providing more space to help us meet the current surge in testing and helping us provide 1 million tests in the number one testing site in America. I'm so proud that the Dodgers are the champions this year, but you also have been champions when it comes to the response for COVID-19 and helping us wage this battle. As always, you can find the locations of any of our testing sites. There are many private providers through your healthcare that are available even during the holidays, and you can see all the places to get tested at coronavirus.lacity.org slash testing, or just call us at 311. Our testing program reflects the spirit of Los Angeles that has animated our response to every challenge thrown our way. The conviction to protect and to lift up the most vulnerable in our community. That same spirit was reflected on being the first big city to have the strong early moratorium on the eviction of our renters. In our tenant defense program to offer legal protection and the thousands of beds in emergency shelters and hotel rooms that have housed Angelinos who are homeless. It's felt in the life-saving impact of our city's emergency renters assistance subsidy program, the single largest rental subsidy program in the United States of America of any city. Since July, we've leveraged the Federal CARES Act dollars as well as the city's general fund to deliver rental subsidies to more than 48,000 low-income households in Los Angeles, keeping many families housed and safe during the COVID emergency. And this week, our city will deliver its last payments through this program, totaling $98 million in assistance to those in our city whose livelihoods have been destroyed as a result of the pandemic. This program has been the result of an extraordinary partnership between our amazing housing and community investment department, uh, staff, our nonprofit partners at the Housing Rights Center, all brought together under the outstanding leadership of our council president, Nuri Martinez and her colleagues. Everybody who brought this from dream to reality in record time. This program has been the difference between a safe place to sleep and being on the street. And it's evidence of the impact we can all make to help the most vulnerable amongst us. When our federal government doesn't step up to the plate, we have stepped up in place. 
And that leadership at the national level has been glaringly absent for so many months. And like so many of you, I'm frustrated that Senate Republicans are blocking $2,000 checks for Americans as if it's some luxury, $2,000, which for all households I know suffering will go like that to make the, meet the basic needs of food and shelter, something that I believe should not only go one time, but every month until this pandemic is over. The agreement that is signed on that does give us the bare minimum of relief is on its way as the president finally signed the COVID-19 relief package. It includes $25 billion in rental assistance program for state and local governments that I lobbied hard for, money that will help us to keep Angelinos housed hopefully next month and the month after. But this package still isn't enough. And I spoke today with Speaker Pelosi. She said that the next package, she will not stop fighting for state and local government. And I urged her that those folks on the front lines, librarians who are contact tracers, healthcare workers who are in the hospitals, firefighters and police officers who have contracted COVID-19 in the line of duty, these are the folks that we need to look at. And she said, they're not just employees, they're also consumers. When they don't have their jobs threatened by layoffs or furloughs, they too can help with the economic rebound. We have to stop ignoring the 19,000 local communities that make this the United States of America. Angelinos demand more, I demand more, and Americans deserve more. And I will work closely with the Biden-Harris administration to ensure that we not only get our fair share, but that we get the next phase of COVID-19 relief that meets the urgent need of working people in Los Angeles and across our country. I promise you that. But in the wake of so much suffering, thank you for not waiting for a cavalry to arrive. Angelinos have stepped up with such generosity to help their fellow residents again and again and again. Every time I'm worried about going to you and asking for more, you answer that call. In this month alone, over 10,000 of you have stepped up to the call for the mayor's fund, delivering nearly $10 million in donations in just the last couple weeks. Hundreds have made small, meaningful contributions. Others have given millions, but everybody's given what they can. And in every act of giving, you are reflecting a sense of responsibility towards one another, linked by a spirit of service and generosity. I'm inspired by all of you, people like Andrew, an Angelino who's now donated 37 separate times to the Angelino Fund and to the Mayor's Fund totaling more than $5,000. Thank you, Andrew, for every moment you can find more giving more. And many people like Snapchat co-founder Bobby Murphy and his incredible wife, Kelsey Murphy. Many months ago, if you remember, in the early days of COVID-19, I shared with you that the Mayor's Fund staff opened the mailbox one day to find a check for $5 million that nobody had solicited. It came from Bobby and Kelsey because after working as a physician's assistant for low-income patients, Kelsey saw the depth of need that emerged in this pandemic, and she wanted to help. She and Bobby did something simple but extraordinary, just putting a check in the mail. And I touched base with Kelsey and Bobby recently about this surge and this moment and the suffering during the holidays that so many felt, and they again wrote another check to the mayor's fund for $6 million. Thank you both. And thank you to everybody who has given proportionately to what you can do. I want everyone listening tonight to understand the transformative power of giving a couple hours or giving a couple dollars or giving whatever you can to somebody in need. A few weeks ago, we set out to raise enough money to fund our secure emergency relief for vulnerable employees or serve for our restaurant employees when outdoor dining was shut down. 4,000 struggling food service workers that we hoped to reach and tonight, thanks to Kelsey and Bobby's and your donations, the Mayor's Fund can now expand serve to help 10,000 of our fellow neighbors who work in restaurants. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your generosity. And this is what we can do when we have more resources. We keep our neighbors fed, we keep our families housed, we keep our most vulnerable from getting sick and even from dying. So I invite you to join Kelsey and Bobby and Andrew and join the thousands of others who are helping out by going to mayorsfundla.org. We get so many appeals at the end of the year and keep supporting all the great companies. Please support the Red Cross, by the way, by giving blood because they need us to continue to do that and we're gonna do it safely. 
Um, we need to dig deep in this moment, if not now, when, and if not us, who. You've always been there, and I thank you. This year has deprived us from so many of the normal rhythms and comforts. Every time when New Year's approaches and every other year, we'd be starting to make our resolutions, setting ambitions to exercise more, to get our finances together, to quit a bad habit. In a moment when so many are simply trying to survive, it seems impossible to reach for more. It seems like these goals for thriving and personal growth might seem trivial when all we're trying to do is survive. But we have to remind ourselves that's not really what a New Year's resolution is about because the word resolve actually comes from a term that means to set free, to set free. And that's exactly what we need, to be set free from this pain, to be set free from this fear, to be set free from this loss that so many of us have felt this year. To pray for folks who are hanging on, like Pastor Wade of Mount Moriah Baptist, who I know is in the hospital, and my love and the love of a city is with him for somebody who's given so much to us. To think about those children still struggling to learn, a year when our children might be free to play and to learn and to see each other, when we are free to return to our workplaces without worrying we will get sick, to be free to see our loved ones and just to hold them and not think that maybe we could be getting them sick. A year free from the shadow of disease, free to do what we want with those we love most. This is my prayer and my only resolution for you and for our city, for us to summon the strength and to find the love that surrounds us and that's within us, to share that with one another and to know that fortitude and that generosity is what has seen us through the toughest days, including this dark moment. I know we will get there together and never bet against Los Angeles. We are a city of angels ready to rise. So continue to stay safe and stay healthy and stay home and stay vigilant in protecting the life that is so precious around each and every one of us. I wish you all a year of health and of hope and of healing, surrounded by that strength and love that I wish you every single night. Thank you, Los Angeles. Here's to a better year ahead. And with that, I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. We have Alter. a question from Albert. Or Boyle. Hey. hey, Albert. Go How ahead. are you? Good evening, Mayor. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, of course. Happy New Year. Uh, I Thank have you. a question. Sure. Uh, first and foremost, I want to know what, what do you have to say to Mayor Mitch McConnell and the GOP about getting $2,000 to the people uh, who desperately need it in all of our communities in America, but especially LA? Um, I also wanted to say, what, uh, to ask, what can you say to a documented folks who will not receive the $600? Absolutely. I don't know that we can uh, prevent that spread. Obviously, we can contact Trace if we find it. Uh, the labs here that have been working in the county have not found it yet here, though. I think it was made public today. Um, it was confirmed by a lab in San Diego. Um, Supervisor Nathan Fletcher uh, in San Diego confirmed that. I'm sure that it is probably somewhere around us. It's not a more vicious um, strain, but it is much more easily transmittable. And I certainly think that's probably that or another mutation of it has certainly seen part of what happens with flu strains and others, uh, that those that are most easily transmitted, most easily get transmitted. <laughs> it's a truism. So we will continue to monitor that and obviously try to put um, together with the county extra resources into contact tracing those cases so that, as um, Dr. Frere said, if it's here, it's certainly not dominant right now, and let's keep it that way. Uh, in terms of undocumented, the, some of the rules were changed in this so that families are not disqualified. Obviously, that direct relief, I think it is unconscionable that we see um, you know, folks who pay taxes, um, uh, who contribute to this country, who are working in essential jobs from our fields to stocking our shelves somehow, who, op who often have American citizen children and spouses um, are denied directly. But this time, at least, families aren't disqualified by having one person um, be 
undocumented and not getting that. And it underscores the importance of something I plan to work very closely with President Biden when he becomes president and Vice President Harris to make sure that immigration reform is at the very top of the list so that we don't have to look at human beings and assign lesser value to them uh, because of their legal status. And then third, in terms of um, Speaker McConnell, again, I think his words were unconscionable today. He politicized and made partisan something that is personal. He said that this was about Democrats, friends of Democrats, rich friends of Democrats who don't need the money. I'd invite Leader McConnell to meet Americans, but probably some who are Republicans, some who are Democrats. We don't actually ask those sorts of questions when we're helping human beings and ask them whether they're rich and whether the difference of $1,400 more will make a tangible impact on the survival of their family, of whether they eat a full meal, about whether or not they'll pay the rent, about whether they will survive the medical bills. This is a moment when we're tested. And if we don't see all Americans as part of our family, regardless of geography or race or age or zip code, let alone what party they happen to register when they vote, then we are not recognizing what this nation is. This nation is a group of people writ large that either feel a mutual obligation to one another, responsibility, and yes, caring, or not. It was one of the most un-American things I have heard in some time. Thank you. Happy New Year, Albert. I'll take the next question. Our next question comes from Julian Bennett and Ross Angelino. Go ahead. Hey, Julia. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Of course. Uh, but you touched a little bit on enforcement of super spreader events earlier, and uh, as I'm sure you know, there's a musician, Sean Point, who's supposedly going to have two large concerts in LA over the next two days. I'm wondering if there's any planned enforcement of this event. Um, it seems like there are some civilians gathering to try to block it, but I'm just wondering if the city is doing anything about this event. I would encourage him, first of all, not to do it. Uh, there are constitutionally protected rights, both religion and protest, which clearly um, he has used and exercised. But just because we do have the right to do things doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So I would encourage him first and foremost, come back, have a good concert after this pandemic is done, because we do not want to see this spread. And the more spread there is, the more hospitalization, the more hospitalization, the more death. So if you care about human lives, and what God has given each one of us, which is this power of life, please don't do this. Second, we know that, yes, we will be there, both the county and the city, the county DPH can and should enforce if there's any violation of any of the public health directives that are out there. And LAPD will be there to make sure that we also enforce people's safety and aggressively encourage people. We'll be out there with whether it's masks or whether it's uh, our officers ensuring that there's not uh, physical violence or anything else. This is just a bad recipe. And um, people can exercise their rights, but they should also understand their responsibilities. So we will be out there. We will have also our city um, uh, ambassadors that are from our other departments, our business ambassadors out there to ensure uh, that public health orders under the city um, that accord to the, or that align, excuse me, with the, the county ones are also enforced. So we'll be out there. Obviously, um, religious and uh, speech and political speech is protected, but this is just a bad idea. And I hope that um, he can take us up on that offer to find the better angels in his heart and to do this another time. Thank you. Next question, please. There are no more questions. Okay. I know the press corps asked a lot this uh, after or this morning in uh, in Lincoln Park. Thank you, as always, to everyone. Um, I wish you the very best of being home with your loved ones or FaceTiming with somebody if you're on your own, uh, please know that we are here to save lives and we have to get through these next two weeks with every little inch, every little ounce, every little bit of strength that we have. Thank you all, God bless. I have a very happy new year as I turn to these remarks in Spanish. Muy buenas tardes, Los Angeles, mi ciudad. Mi gente, esta es mi sesión informativa número 83 
desde el comienzo de esta pandemia durante este año terrible. Y mi última en el 2020. Esta semana le damos la bienvenida al Año Nuevo y la oportunidad de dejar atrás al dolor del pasado y avanzar hacia un futuro mejor y más saludable. El lunes estuve con algunos bomberos y paramédicos mientras recibían sus primer, primeras dosis de la vacuna contra el COVID-19. Y hoy visité un sitio de recreo donde comenzamos a vacunar a trabajadores de salud en Lincoln Heights. Esto es solo el principio, pero nos da esperanza. Sin embargo, seguimos en un momento de gran sufrimiento. Uno entre cada mil americanos ha perdido su vida por COVID-19. Uno entre cada mil. Ayer fue un día más mortal de la pandemia en California y más de la mitad fueron aquí en el condado de Los Ángeles. Así que al empezar el año nuevo, le pido a cada angelino que se dedique a seguir las órdenes de salud públicas hasta que la vacuna acabe con esta pandemia. Sabemos cómo este virus se transmite en reuniones y con contacto cercano. Es simple. Por eso mi mensaje no puede ser más claro. No se reúna con otros para el año nuevo. No organice ni vaya a una fiesta en persona. Celebren de manera virtual. Quédense en casa y celebre solamente con la gente en su hogar y con nadie más. Tuvimos 10,392 nuevas infecciones hoy en el condado de Los Ángeles y 4,202 de los nuevos casos están en la ciudad de Los Ángeles. Mientras les habló, 7,546 personas están hospitalizadas con COVID-19, el número más alto desde el comienzo de la pandemia. 1,528 pacientes están en nuestras unidades de cuidados intensivos. Si se reúne con personas fuera de su hogar, es probable que la atención médica no esté disponible cuando se necesite en unas pocas semanas. Así que todos debemos tomar acción durante este periodo peligroso. El Departamento de Salud Pública del Condado anunció que viajeros llegando a Los Ángeles deben estar en cuarentena durante 10 días. Encuentre el formulario en travel.lacity.org. Y nuestra ciudad seguirá cortando la luz en casas o negocios violando las leyes de salud pública. Por lo general, nuestro pueblo está haciendo su parte para luchar contra este virus. Y necesitamos que todos redoblen sus esfuerzos. Ahora, usen mascarilla, manteguen su distancia, lávense las manos y eviten cualquier reunión. Además, tenemos acceso a pruebas disponibles para todos. Si tiene síntomas de COVID-19 o cree que puede haber sido expuesto, hágase la prueba inmediatamente y póngase en cuarentena hasta que reciba un resultado negativo. Pero recuerde, un resultado de prueba negativo no significa que puede irse de fiesta. Y si recibe un resultado positivo, aíslese durante al menos 10 días desde cuando empezaron sus, sus síntomas, síntomas hasta al menos 24 horas después de la última fiebre. Desde el comienzo de la pandemia, hemos realizado 3.3 millones de pruebas en sitios de la ciudad y nuestros sitios de prueba tienen una tasa de positividad de 23.4%. 
Y recuerde que cualquiera puede ver el nivel de riesgo en su propia comunidad usando el mapa del vecindario COVID-19 de Los Ángeles. Visite la página coronavirus.lacity.org diagonal map. Actualmente tenemos hasta 46 mil citas de pruebas diarias disponibles esta semana. Y les recuerdo que estarán cerrados los sitios mañana y durante el uh, primer de enero, primero de enero, con la excepción de Kendred, el sitio de Kendred mañana. Además, les comparto que permanecerá cerrado el sitio del estadio de los Dodgers este sábado, solamente para reorganizar el sitio y reducir el tráfico en, el, en la comunidad. Quisiera agradecer a los Dodgers por proporcionar más espacio para ayudarnos en cumplir con la demanda de pruebas en el sitio más grande en los Estados Unidos. Los Dodgers son campeones en béisbol, pero son campeones también en la lucha contra COVID-19. Puede encontrar un sitio de prueba en la página coronavirus.lacity.org diagonal testing o llame al 311. Desde julio, hemos usado fondos federales, así como fondos municipales, para ayudar a más de 48 mil hogares con subsidios para la renta. Esta semana, la ciudad entregará los últimos pagos a través de este programa, logrando en total de casi 97 millones de dólares en asistencia para las familias más afectadas por la pandemia. Me alegra saber que finalmente Uh, hay más ayuda federal en camino. El presidente finalmente firmó el último paquete de asistencia COVID-19. Este acuerdo incluye 25 mil millones de dólares en asistencia de renta para los gobiernos estatales y locales, dinero que nos ayudará a mantener a angelinos alojados. Pero este paquete aún no es suficiente. Necesitamos más para mantener nuestro gobierno en operación, para nuestras escuelas y para servicios críticos para tantos. Nosotros merecemos más y colaboraré con la nueva administración de Biden-Harris para asegurar que los angelinos reciban lo que necesitamos para apoyar a nuestros residentes, incluyendo asistencia por nuestros inmigrantes y reforma de nuestras leyes de inmigración en los Estados Unidos. Quisiera tomar ahora un momento para agradecer a todos quienes han donado al Mayor's Fund de Los Ángeles para ayudar a nuestras familias más afectadas. Hace unas semanas nos uh, propusimos recaudar suficiente dinero para financiar nuestra iniciativa de alivio seguro de emergencia para empleados vulnerables, or, o SURF para apoyar a 4,000 trabajadores de servicios de alimentación en Los Ángeles. Esta noche, gracias a las donaciones de mucha gente y la donación de Kelsey y Bobby um, Murphy, una familia increíble, ahora podemos ampliar SUR para ayudar a 10,000 trabajadores, 10,000 de nuestros vecinos. 10,000 de miembros de nuestras familias. Desde el fondo de mi corazón, gracias a Kelsey y Bobby, la familia Murphy y los otros que están donado, donando este dinero crítico para las familias en Los Ángeles. Les invito a unirse a las miles de personas que son parte de este esfuerzo. Si tiene algo de sobra, por favor, visite mayorsfundla.org. Finalmente, este momento, al fin de este año, este año ha sido como ningún otro. Pero mi oración para el año nuevo es tener un nuevo, un año nuevo con una nueva libertad para todos nosotros, libre del dolor y de las dificultades que todos hemos pasado este año. Sé que superaremos esto juntos, 
Entonces, este año nuevo, empecemos de manera positiva, con esperanza, con fuerza, con amor, seguros, saludables y en casa. Deseándonos a todos un año nuevo de salud, de recuperación, de sanidad, esperanza y como siempre, fuerza y amor. Es un honor representarles como su alcalde y estamos, estamos marchando un día mejor. Gracias.